Hello, I'm Luna. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I would like to show you a step-by-step -step sewing tutorial for my newest digital pattern, Celeste. I have designed Celeste to be a very versatile pattern with a lot of options in matters of garments and looks that you can achieve using this pattern. Besides the main dress, the pattern comes with a blouse and a vest option and also a free pattern for a detachable collar in 4 sizes. Video tutorials for all of them will come very soon. Celeste is constructed to be flattering for each silhouette with a total of 12 sizes available, but more details you will find in the description below along with the link to the digital pattern. If you like my work and would like to be part of my journey, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I would love to have you here and it would be an immense help for me. Thank you so much and now let's move on to the pattern. Now let's start. First, the supplies that we are going to need. I will leave down the quantities that I used. I have here a thick cotton because I made this version in the beginning of spring, but you can use so many fabrics to make this dress. Next, buttons. You will need at least 10-12 buttons for the dress and 2 for the sleeves. But this number may vary depending on the length that you desire for your dress and the size of the buttons. Lining. If you wish to use lining for your dress, I recommend a light cotton. However, it is not mandatory and absolutely fine to sew the dress without a lining. In the written material for this pattern, there are presented the small differences between lining and not lining the dress. A video for this dress without lining will come very soon. Fusible interfacing. It is used to interface the facing of the front part of the dress the cuffs and the bias of the sleeves. And of course the pattern, you will find it in the link below and I would appreciate very much if you would like to check it out. Next, the pattern pieces. Here are the center front and center back parts of the pattern. If you need help to print and assemble the paper pattern, I link below a video in which I'm explaining the whole process. Everything is also explained in detail in the written instructions for this pattern. I have here a size 34 with 1 cm of seam allowance. You will need to cut 2 center front and 2 center back pieces from the main fabric. The sides, here are the side front and the side back pieces of the pattern. You need to cut 2 from the main fabric. sleeves that have gathering on top and bottom. And here we have the sleeve bias. You need to place it diagonally on the fabric and cut two of them. The neck facing piece, place it on fold and cut one and the sleeve cuffs, place it on fold and cut two of them. You have mark on it the button and buttonhole placement. cut the pattern pieces. When cutting the pattern pieces, it is important to make sure that you will have the straight grain of each piece parallel with the edge of the fabric. careful to transfer all your notches and marks to the fabric. On the pattern that you can download using the link below, the marks and notches are placed on the seam allowance too. And here we have the pattern pieces. Two sleeves, two center front parts, two side back parts, two side front parts, 
two center back parts, one neck facing part, two bars for the sleeves, and two cuffs. Now let's move on to interfacing. You will need two pieces of interfacing for the front facing of the dress. I'm putting the interface on top of the pattern, trace the piece that I need and then cut it. You will also need to interface half of each cuff and the bias tape if the fabric that you are using requires it. Here I am pressing the interfacing on the front facing. Gently press it all the way down on both sides. After you attach the interfacing, fold the facing of the dress inside and press it. Moving to the sleeve cuff, press the interfacing on half of the cuff. On the other side of the cuff, the one without interfacing, fold one centimeter inside and press it really well. After that, pull the cuff in half and press it again. Moving on to the bias, I have interfaced my sleeve bias too because the fabric that I'm using needs it and then I'm going to fold inside each edge and press it well. to overlock or zigzag stitch all the pattern pieces, especially if you are not going to align the dress. I'm going to overlock the bottom after I will attach the pattern pieces together. Now let's start to assemble the dress. Firstly, pin the center back parts with right sides facing each other and stitch them with 1 cm of seam allowance. Next, 
next comes the center front and side front pieces. On the center front piece, place the corresponding side front piece with right sides together and match the notches. Pin them in place and stitch with 1 cm of seam allowance. Then repeat the same steps for the other side. After you finish, press the seam really well. Now let's attach the side back pieces. On the center back piece, place on each side the corresponding side back piece, with right sides facing each other. Match the notch to the center back with the top edge of the side back and start to pin them all the way down. Repeat the same steps for the other side and stitch them together. After you finish the seams, press them really well. Next, the side seams. Now that the front and the back part of the dress are assembled, it's time to stitch them together. Pin them in place with right sides facing each other and stitch all the way down. Then press the seam. Moving on to the shoulder seams. Attach together the shoulders with pins with right sides facing each other and stitch them. Now that the main parts of the dress are assembled, press really well all the seams that you have made. Now let's move on to attaching the neck facing. Place the dress open with the right side up and the facing of the front part out and flat on the table as you can see in the video. On the upper edge of the front facing, place one part of the neck facing with right sides together. Pin them in place. Next, do the same for the other part of the neck facing. Pin them in place and then stitch them together.
after you stitch them together, press the seams really well. Now let's move on to the next step and attach the facing to the dress and stitch the neckline. Place the facing and the dress on top of each other with the right sides together. Next, start to match and pin the neckline from one part to another. Take your time and do it slowly and match all the seams. After everything is secured with pins, stitch them together with 1 cm of seam allowance. Before pressing the neckline, clip the seam along the curvier parts. This will allow the fabric to lay smoothly. Now let's move on to the hem. First thing before you make the hem is to attach the bottom part of the facing to the center front. Turn out the facing with the wrong side up and place it on top of the center front part with right sides together inside. Pin the facing to the front part and mark your desired hemline. I usually make it between 1 and 2 cm because this measurement will dictate the rest of your hemline. After you mark your hem, stitch the facing in place. After you stitched it, Press the seam first and then turn it inside, making the corners as sharp as possible. Next, you can start to pin the hem, maybe use an iron to press it and help you to pin it in place easier and then stitch all the hem. If you wish to line the dress, I'm going to show you now how to draft the lining. You can find in the written instructions of this pattern the differences between lining and not lining the dress and I would recommend you to read them before starting. Now let's draft it. So you will have to draft only the front part and the back part of the lining, the sides remain the same as the pattern. But keep in mind that you will need to make the lining with 5 cm shorter than the main fabric. Fold the facing over the center front as I'm showing you in the video and then trace the line.
Next, unfold the facing and now measure 1 cm to the right from the line that you have traced. We need to do it because this will be the seam allowance. And the last step is to cut on the second line that you have traced and this will be the front part of the lining. You can easily tape the pattern back after you finish using it. Now let's move on to the center back part of the lining. All you need to do here is to place the neck facing piece over the center back piece of the pattern and trace a line. Next, measure 1 cm above the line that you have traced. This is again the seam allowance. Now that we have drafted the center front and center back of the lining, you can cut it from the fabric. Remember that the sides, the front side and the back side are the same, no modifications needed for those. And also remember to make the lining with at least 5 cm shorter than the main fabric. Here are the lining parts cut out from the fabric. After you cut the lining, assemble and stitch it in the exact same way as you did for the main fabric. Here is how the lining should look after you assemble it. Now let's move on to the next step, attaching the lining to the main fabric. Place the dress open with the right side up and the facing out. On top, Place the lining open with the right side down, the right sides facing each other inside. The lining will be stitched along the edge of the facing with the right sides together. Start to match and pin the lining to the edge of the facing from the neckline down on both sides. After you pinned the lining to the main fabric, stitch them together.
press the seam that you have made really well and then turn the lining inside. Now that the dress is assembled, let's move on to cuffs and sleeves. You will see that at some point during the video explanation for the sleeves, the fabric will change because unfortunately I had some problems with my camera and I had to remake the video. First, take the cuff that we have interfaced before and turn it inside with right sides together. Next, stitch the sides of the cuff with 1 cm of seam allowance. Cut the sleeve opening and then pull it so the two edges will form a straight line. Next, start to pin in place the bias. Here I'm showing you the sandwich method, but if you feel more comfortable using another one, please do so. Place the folded bias on the sleeve opening, making sure to catch the sleeve inside and then stitch as close to the edge as possible. After you attached the bias tape to the sleeve opening, stitch the small corner on the bias tape on the wrong side of the fabric and then press the bias really well towards the center. Moving on to the gathering stitch. Using the longest stitch length on your sewing machine, make two parallel stitches on the sleeve head from notch to notch. Let the thread tails longer in order to be able to pull them. Repeat the same steps to make the gathering stitch at the bottom of the sleeve. Begin and finish the stitch with 1 cm from the sleeve opening. Next, stitch the side seam of the sleeve and then press it really well.
moving on to attaching the cuffs. You can make the cuff the same length as the sleeve or you can choose to have an overlap sleeve cuff, but in this case remember that the cuff has to be longer. Gather the sleeve hem by pulling the threads and match it with the length of the cuff. Turn the sleeve inside out and place the inner part of the cuff, the one that is interfaced and with the unfolded edge, on the hem of the sleeve. The right side of the cuff will be placed on the wrong side of the sleeve. Now match the cuff edges with the sleeve opening and then pin them in place. After you pin them, stitch them together. Now you can remove the gathering stitches and press the seam really well. Next, turn the cuff and the sleeve to the right side. Now, with the outer part of the cuff, the one with the folded edge, we are going to cover the stitch line. Place the cuff over the seam and pin it. Then top stitch the cuff very close to the edge. Moving on to attaching the sleeves to the armhole. Pull the gathering stitch at the head of the sleeve and then turn the dress inside out and insert the sleeve through the armhole with right sides together. Start to match and pin the sleeve in place and once everything is secured, stitch carefully with 1 cm of seam allowance.
Now you can remove the gathering stitches and press the seam. Try to press it mainly on the bodice part, avoiding the gathering part of the sleeve, because in this way you will keep the puff of the sleeve. And now the sleeve is attached and you can repeat the same steps for the other sleeve. You can choose to place the buttons and buttonholes in the same way as they are placed on the pattern or you can choose to place them differently depending on the size of your buttons and what suits your garment the best. After you decide the placement of your buttons, mark the buttonholes. Using your sewing machine, stitch all the buttonholes. After you stitched all the buttonholes, now hand stitch all the buttons and the dress is done! Thank you so so much for watching until now, I really hope that this video was helpful and thank you for spending this time with me. It would mean so much to me if you would like to check out Celeste's sewing pattern and also my other sewing patterns, I will leave them in the link below. And also if you like, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, it is an immense help for me if you do so. Thank you so much for all your support and I will see you in my next video. Until then, stay magical with love, Luna.